Informed, outspoken, wild, fearless. This is the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast. What is up, my dudes? This is Trent with the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast. I am joined by Jordan, Seth, and Phil. It is week 11. We have some news and notes. Week 11 sleepers, Thursday night preview, a video from TFF Dad, the Fantasy Football Dad, and all our week 11 matchups. We are going to go through those from the highest point total to the lowest point total, but we're going to sandwich it on the ends with Thursday night football and Monday night football, of course. We finally have a good Monday night football game this week, so I can't wait to dive into that one. But uh, before we start this thing off, no more Deshaun Watson this year. This is looking like the worst trade ever. Jordan, I know you're – Seth, you had Deshaun Watson as a dud of the year, so this is a win for you. But uh, what are you guys thinking about guess, that? I, you by know? default, I guess. By default, absolutely. Yeah. I mean – Take the dub. Talked, yeah, I mean, I we've been talking about how bad Deshaun Watson is for a while now. So I don't The know, only I'm reason he was fantasy relevant was because his rushing. That's it. Yeah. He doesn't what? run anymore. He, yeah, he ran a run little now. bit on Sunday. He, he had a yeah. decent amount of running. But mm-hmm. yeah, honestly, props to the guy for uh, playing the game with what a broken shoulder on his was it his throwing arm? Uh, yeah, I think a so. broken bone in his throwing arm, correct? Yeah, so I don't know, and an ankle injury. So, uh, yeah, and we're gonna have a weird matchup this week with that because we got Browns and Ravens, I believe, playing with our Browns and Steelers, which might be that you know. The two most boring six and three teams ever of all time. It'll be interesting to see how the Browns finish this season off with all the injury riddled season they've had. But uh, you want to take a, you guys want to just jump into this right here real quick, or you want to take a quick Phil? Let's, you know, the fancy dad sit to the video. I'm just going to play it for you real quick. Play the video. You guys can get it. And then we'll go right into our week 11 matchup. So here it is. I think now is as good a time as any. What's up, my dudes? I wanted to address uh, Phil here. I just learned on Monday's show that you changed your team allegiance to impress your father-in-law. That's a no-go, my friend. You don't see me trading in my Lions act because my wife, the Patriot fan, tells me it's time to trade it in. It's one pride around here. That's just the way it is. She doesn't tell me what to... Yes. Go Patriots. (laughs) (laughs) is 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 that kind of what it looked like phil was it was it similar to that or was it uh, more aggressive than that or was it less aggressive like or were you just right away like hey i'll switch teams it was less cool than brock purdy earning his father-in-law's love by driving a a harvester combine like it was basically like i had to do like i it was it was way less cool than that is what i'll say it was basically like I am, I'm interested in your daughter. I want to marry your daughter. I'm willing to switch teams if that is something that I need to do. And lo and behold, you know, four children later it worked out, but I don't, I think it was more of like just a conversation piece. And I was really like keeping track of them right around the time they got good. But yeah, I mean, fantasy dad, he doesn't miss like that one. That was a good, that would, that could have been a sketch almost on SNL. Like that was a good, that was a good little sketch here. We got to give, got to give a uh, clap it up for that one for sure. Yeah, I don't know. No, I agree. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. But yeah, it, it was kind of awkward. I don't know if he was really I don't know if that was acting or if that was real. It looked pretty real. The problem is, it's like we all we we all make we all make concessions like Trent never wore jeans before he met his wife. Like I only <laughs> see him in jeans now. Like he literally only wore cargo shorts. <laughs> that is jeans actually- guy. Thank you, that Seth. That's a crazy point. That's actually yeah. crazy. Because now it'll I, be like 105, and Trent's complaining about how hot is it, and he's wearing like tight jeans. And I'm like, dude. I'm yeah, like, I, I had stones on the back. I'm like, you're wild. Thank you, Seth. And thankfully, we got Manscaped because the guy's like, and this is a great promo for Manscaped. It's 110. The dude's wearing jeans, but he's feeling good because he has the Manscaped underwear. Um, Trent, give me an ad read. That yeah, Manscaped yeah, promo underwear code- is great. Yeah, promo code DUDES20, 20% off your whole entire order. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Go check those boxers out, guys. They're really nice. They're the they really good in 105 degree weather, you know. And While uh, wearing the, jeans. Rhinestone cowboy chubbies. right here, you know. And uh, might need some Manscaped for this uh, mustache I got going on here, too. Might want to go check that out on the YouTube if you're into mustaches. I don't know. Not sure what our listeners think about that. But uh, 
Yeah, I had so, a great Manscaped promo on the waiver pod. And okay. I was going to save it because I know you guys probably didn't listen to it, but I basically said uh, things need to change for Trevor Lawrence here, and maybe it should start with the Manscaped razor to his head. So I don't know. He's just got to do something a little different. I right? listened to it shave because that puppy. I, I'm glad I listened to it because I love when Trent plugged it, that Jordan was definitely not going to listen to it. That was probably like the funniest part of the whole thing is when I catch that, he's like, you know, I'm going to say this because Jordan's definitely not going to hear this, but I had to say it just to throw Trent back under the bus. So glad I did. <laughs> what what do you cool say about me? Seth. You just, you're going to have to go back and listen Seth or Jordan. You're going to have to go listen. Sorry about yeah, that. Uh, no Zero chance. I'm listening. Okay, I'll give you the like though. Okay, I will view yeah. it and like it, but I'm not okay. listening. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, would uh, you call him a common but, but, or would you call him a, a simpleton? No, what was uh, the thing? no, uh, a casual sports fan. Casual, right? casual, <laughs> a sim, no, no, no. casual sim. You guys all should listen to it. Simp fan. It does a good job. Simp fan. Uh, you guys yeah, should listen to good. it. Yeah, you should listen to it. I mean, here at the end of the day, like I talk to the guy more than enough. I don't he need to hear his voice anymore or see the jeans that he's wearing every single day. So uh, we could probably move on here and jump into game one here. Trent is right. We have Thursday night football. Bengals are five and four. Ravens are seven and three. The current total right now is 46. This might be this line. I don't know if it's right. Maybe it's it's right because, uh, yes, it is right. The uh, Baltimore is currently favored by four. Um, no starts or sits in this game, but this could be a good one. Uh, let's dive into this one. All right. After we dive into this, let's get into sleepers, Phil. I know it's a new segment, so we still got to get that one in there. But we'll you know do what? Do after. you want to do it again? You want to do? No, do you no, want to no, just? No, go? We can. We can. Let's we can go. go. Okay. We can go and do it after. No, I. Is this going to be the best Thursday night football game of all time? Maybe. I. I don't know. Maybe Lamar Jackson can bring it. We'll see. I know the Bengals are a little beat up right now. T. Higgins isn't playing, which will lead to my sleeper later. Uh, Start your Mark Andrews. Start. Uh, I actually kind of like Odell Beckham maybe in this game. He's on a two game touchdown streak, I think. We'll see if he can keep it going to three. Uh, is a deep, deep play. Maybe Mixon has a good game. What are, what are your notes here you got here on this Thursday night game, Jordan? Um, I just think it's a really good spot for Baltimore offense here. Zay Flowers has been pretty bad lately. I think it could be a decent bounce back spot for him. Um, this is a Cincinnati defense just got carved by CJ Stroud. I know CJ Stroud's playing awesome, but I mean, it's still like Lamar's capable of kind of, um, having a good game here. And so like Andrews flowers, uh, and then on the Cincinnati side, like I like chase burrow. It's a tough matchup for Mixon. Um, and then Trent Irwin, like Trent Irwin's a deep flex play. I think, um, with T Higgins out. Yeah. That's exactly what I got there. And hopefully we keep the Mark Andrews string on. What I'm kind of wondering here is, uh, is uh, what's it called? Is Keaton Mitchell, if he comes back and has another good game here, looks like Jordan had to leave. He's got some uh, chicken here on his George Foreman grill. So uh, <laughs> he doesn't have a barbecue, but hey, it's okay. Like I used to have he was George limping Foreman around here. earlier. Hey, I don't know how George you burn chicken money. in the microwave, but it happens. So. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those chicken medium rare kind of guys. I, I, I'm not sure oh, if that's completely great for that. you, but uh, yeah, it's one of those hefty meals. What are they called? Uh, hefty, the hearty, the hungry man, hungry man uh, meals. That's hungry what it's man, called. Jordan's back. Trent, Jordan, you're not yeah. allowed. You're not allowed to make fun of me when you're the one who told me how great of an how great an air fryer is. <laughs> I oh, love air fryer. roasted. You weren't making fun of the air so, fryer. Like, he said, I use, I, it wasn't a George Foreman. I have the air fryer going. Yeah, air fryers are way better. But, hey, George Foreman, though, from like the age of like 17 through like 21, that was my go to for I'm, like, I'm chicken, pretty sure hamburgers. that I'm pretty sure I've had many a hamburgers off Trent's George Foreman. Yeah. No, they're pretty good. <laughs> Phil, do you not have a George Foreman? You never had one? No, I had one when no, I was. Phil a kid. has an easy bake oven. He loves those. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Seth couldn't figure out how to use it though. The last time he was here, uh, Jordan, true. Jordan. What do you think of Keaton Mitchell? You think the streak ends? You know, he's he's I, probably the most explosive guy right now. He's not playing enough. Is the problem? Like he's only playing like twenty percent snaps. So, um, I think he's extremely talented. He was at really good at ECU uh in college so like I, I like him a lot i just 
I wish he would play more. Like I, I looked at the snaps, like thinking he'd play a lot, but basically had the one big run and that was it. He's had yeah, like, like two, yeah, he's had big, like yeah. two. Yeah, he had like two big runs last week. The week before, he had one big run, but yeah, he's he's making the most out of his opportunities. I did see that they said Harbaugh today on set on record that they're going to try to get him the ball more. So he is definitely going to go up in touches when he's in. At least like maybe the snap percentage won't go up, but like it's possible he's like the official number two back now. Yeah, well, he kind of was. Um... He played 13 snaps, Justice Hill played 14, and Gus Edwards played 28. So, like, he's getting doubled up by Gus Edwards. So, I, I don't know. And Gus Edwards is going to be the goal line back, too. So, he Absolutely. has to like, bust off a long touchdown run. I don't yeah. know if you can play him in season long. I, I don't know. I guess you it, could. I think it's a very deep, deep, deep sleeper. It's not going to be fun to play him on a Thursday night football game if he doesn't play. Like, I just, I hate starting out – you know, with a guy who does not play on Thursday night. Like I, if a guy gets less than five points on Thursday night football, I'm like really mad. Like, cause I just think like, man, there could have been, there had to have been someone better on waivers. And even if the guy only scores three points on Sunday, at least, you know, I don't feel like I'm dead in the water on Thursday night, you know, already ruining my weekend. Phil, do you agree with that statement? Yeah. Ruined weekends are never a good thing, especially with a low score on a Thursday night football game. I actually wanted to ask Jordan what seasoning he has on his chicken. Please tell me it's just not, so raw chicken that I actually, I actually, I went to Taco Bell last night and I grabbed a bunch of sauces and I didn't, I didn't use them because I forgot I had a, an old, a leftover sauce from the taco truck. <laughs> so I tried something today and I basically, I smothered the, the chicken in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, what's the purple sauce from Taco Bell? Mild. The Diablo, I don't know. No, like the hot sauce from Taco Bell. I don't know. I was just trying something different. Hey, I, hey dude. Bone apple tea. That sounds. We'll, we'll, see, you we'll know. see how it tastes. I don't know. Just trying something different here. Fair there enough. we go. I, I'm excited to see this. I need. I think we need a photo of this to. Uh, to. Uh, I think we need a photo of this. Uh, the end result. But uh, let's. You, you want to talk about sleepers? Jordan's probably gonna have to go flip his chicken here in a second. Let's. Uh, yeah. You want to dive into let's, sleepers let's real let's quick? Get into sleepers, Phil. And you, you know, you. This is another part you always forget here, but I have a sleeper video now and everyone really likes it. The dude sleepers of the week presented by sleeper. Shh. That's just, you know, make you so sleepy. I'm sure it does. Uh, That's that audio creeps me out as much, as much as your mustache. Uh, I'm going to go backwards this week. I want to go Seth Jordan and then Trent. Does that work? That works. Yep. All right, let's That's do it. Fine with me. So my sleeper of the week is Trey McBride. Um, so Trey McBride over the last three weeks has seen his snap per, uh, snap percentage come up. He's at least played. He was kind of more in the fifties week six and seven, and then weeks eight through ten he was in the seventy plus, and then uh, he, it has seen though he has been in the eighties, which is really good. Um, the last three games he's had, this is how many targets he's had. And this is Kyler Murray's just last game. Um, but this is 20, oh, 30 targets. Okay. 30 targets, uh, 21 catches uh, for like a hundred and oh, wow. It's like 240 yards and a touchdown. So like he's getting the use there. He's talented. Jordan was saying when he got drafted last year, like this guy's going to be good. Uh, they're going to throw him the ball. Um, Zach Ertz is hurt, so he's not playing. I just think he's going to keep getting used in this offense. Like, and especially last week, he came off an ex explosive game, nine targets, eight catches, 131 yards, just had a, like a career game. Um, and I think we can expect something like a little bit like uh, in that trend area. And with tight end being so bad, you, you think this guy maybe is available. Um, maybe not after this week, cause maybe people picked him up in the waiver wire with some tight end injuries and buys. But I think if you can play this guy this week, like even in a flex spot, like I think I'm doing that in one of my leagues and I'm pretty excited about it. So as my sleeper of the week, Trey McBride. I like it. Jordan over to you. Yeah. I got a uh, Justin Watson as my sleeper this week. We'll, we'll get to this game at the end of the pod, but it's a, it's an excellent matchup for uh chiefs wide receivers here. Philadelphia is the best matchup for opposing wide receivers. 
Um, and Mahomes coming off a bye, he struggled recently. I think that's going to change this week and a good matchup off the bye. Andy Reid's usually pretty good in those situations. Watson played second most snaps at wide receiver in week nine at 63% snaps. And I feel like Mahomes likes him. He's kind of like that, that pseudo deep threat for them um, this year. Um, and Mahomes likes him. I, I feel like he's always throwing him the ball when he's in. So I think he can break off a long touchdown this week. I think he can be a top 35 wide receiver this week. And to be honest, I didn't even see him in the rankings I was looking at. So I like Watson this week. One of the Kansas City wide receivers is going to get there. I think it can be Watson. Trent. All right. My sleeper of the week. I'll keep it short and sweet. I got Trent Irwin. Uh, no relation to Steve Irwin was second in targets last week <laughs> and receptions. He had eight catches for 60 yards. Tyler Boyd only had six catches for 39 yards with T Higgins out. I absolutely like Trenton Irwin this week. And, uh, it's going to take all hands on deck to beat the Ravens this week. Like I said, in the waiver pod. So go, uh, I think you can play Trent Irwin, you know, in deep leagues. And even, you know, if you, if you got nothing to lose, plug that guy in and play him and see what happens. But uh, I think that kind of is our sleepers uh, though. Just so we, we don't get going? in trouble. Tyler Boyd had 117 yards and 12 targets. Yeah. Let me just make sure you get that right. But Trent. I still think it's a good sleeper, Trent. So do I. I don't know why my notes here say he was ahead of Tyler Boyd. So maybe the source I'm reading was not good. So I'm going to blame the athletic on that one. Trent, I'll send you some, uh, I'll send you some, a website that can give you more reliable information. You don't like the athletic. I love the athletic. Well, you're relying on someone else's information. Someone yeah, else. Give me, and give me your, give me your, Oh no. I just, that's just a preview of the game is what I saw. So sorry. Oh, about that. Okay. Got you. It's not uh, like I just went on stats thing. That was just what a guy wrote. So, um, I'm sure he got blasted in the comments, just like I will. Yeah, <laughs> you will. Uh, the Craigslist, the back pages of Craigslist. There, Trent. Make sure not to post th that clip of you on TikTok. Uh, we might get uh, our friend, our our favorite favorite uh, viewer might love. Them. Honestly, when he posts false stats on TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that, it goes off. You know, because people like feel like they have oh, to. Oh, for sure feel like yeah. they have to correct you it's very quick baby but uh yeah i probably won't do that our my cj stroud is not mvp of the houston texans went crazy on instagram this week go check that out at tff dude give some love to lovey smith uh phil's favorite coach and davis mills so you won't want to miss that out but phil what do we got <laughs> next here we need, well hold on trent trent we need winners who's gonna win winners. i got ten c I'm going to go Ravens at home, but I can't see Burrow losing two in a row, though. And and who do you have the count from last week, Jordan, actually? I will. I'll, I'm getting there. I'm going Bengals. Okay. I'm going nasty. Since a nasty, baby, know. let's go. Uh, Ravens bird what? gang. People in Ohio say that. Okay, right. last week, I uh, Seth and I tied for last at eight, eight and six. And then Phil was uh, 10 and four, and Trent was the winner at 11 and three. That wow. brings our totals to Phil in last place with one, Seth with two, Trent with three, and I have four. All righty. Come back, Trail. Coming back. I think you're talking about me, Phil. What do we have next on the list, though, Phil? <laughs> All right, moving on here. We have the two and eight Cardinals versus the five and four Texans. Current total right now is 47 and a half. Houston is currently favored by four. We have a we have two starts in this game. Uh, Trent, let's go with you, and then we'll kick it over to Seth. All right. I have Marquise Brown as my start of the week here. The Texans have allowed 21 receptions of 20-plus yards, fifth most in the league, and uh, I think Kyler Murray's getting better every single week, so fire up Marquise Hollywood Brown. I think this is a really good spot for him here. I I'm more excited about this game than any of them. You know, hence it's the number one total on the game we have. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like Marquise Brown in this spot. And it's kind of like, you know, the Cardinals Texans are kind of like brother, like sister teams or something. Like all the old Texans players always go to the Cardinals. But I know Hopkins and Watt are gone. But just a little side note there. That it seems like uh, ownership's kind of friends. You know, maybe there's some friendly bets there. Uh, what else do we got in this game, though? Yeah, so I'll go to my start in Devin Singletary. Um, it's very possible that that Pierce comes back, but it, he didn't practice today. 
he hasn't practiced in like the last two weeks from an injury. So he's definitely not coming back. I don't think he's, I think he's trending towards not playing. So I think Singletary's fine. Singletary, I believe played a majority of the snaps. He played 81%. So yes, he played most of the snaps. He did not see much in the receiving game, but he did have 30 carries last week. And that game was a shootout. Okay. So even though he had, 30 carries in a shootout game where both teams were passing the ball a lot. He still got there with 150 yards and a touchdown. So I think this week with a high total, even if he doesn't get there necessarily on the yard side, he, I think he is going to score a rushing touchdown. The Cardinals defense is not good, which is why we see that total. Um, but I think he can break off some big runs, have a decent yardage. And I think he's almost guaranteed a touchdown in this game. That's what I'm hoping for. So yeah, he's my start of the week. I think he has a potential to be a top five running back. Playing James Conner in this one too. On the other James side Connor's of the ball, James Conner's a good one too. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you got on this, Jordan? Um, I like this game for fantasy just in general. I think it's uh, one of the higher totals on the board. Um, I like the Stroud receivers again. I don't know if Nico Collins is, is back this week or not, but I, I am curious to see what it looks like when all four guys are in. When Woods, Collins, uh, Brown, and Dell are all in, I don't know what that's going to look like. I saw uh, Noah Brown is not didn't practice today, so just kind of see what's there and who's there, but I, I like I like the Stroud and the uh, the Texans receivers. And then I think Kyler and Marquise Brown, Trey McBride, like all guys you guys mentioned, I, I love the spot for them. I think this is a lot of pieces on both sides. So a game I'll probably have a lot of D in DFS as well, just because I think there could be a, this could be a shootout. The Texans seem to be in shootouts. So I, I like this game quite a bit. Guys, just, a, just a dynasty question here. I saw this on Twitter the other day. What are you like, like Mechie? Seth has Mechie on a dynasty team. Are you like, you could probably acquire him for pretty cheap right now as one of the, you know, young Texans pass catcher. He's in his second year, uh, a rookie, according to Jordan. But uh, <laughs> he, I, I, I think it's a good idea to throw some third round picks. You know, your late, late picks for Mechie with how good CJ Stroud is. I, I think it's worth you know trying to acquire Mechie in dynasty formats, not redraft. Do Do you worry though that like why is he on the field right now? I think just because the guy had cancer last year and didn't play, I still think he's like getting it, getting the feeling all for it back. Like I, he's still oh, like, like he's a rookie. Yeah. The guy had cancer. He didn't do anything last year. He wasn't backing so, uh, up Alex that's Smith. My, that's my point. It's like a rookie, you know, he's Trent was about to say that he's like a rookie. No, I'm saying that he didn't even, the guy was fighting for his life a year ago. Like, no, okay. In spot. all seriousness, he should I, maybe I just, be comeback player of the year. No, I agree. I just, no, no, in all seriousness, I, I don't, I just worry, like, what's his future there? Like, if Nico Collins is not that old of a guy, Tank Dell's a rookie, an actual rookie, um, Noah Brown's a young guy, Robert Woods would be what, the old guy there? Yeah. yeah. So, like, the old guy. what, so, like, what, what's the role? Like, like, I don't know. Noah Brown's been really good. And maybe maybe he eventually overtakes Noah Brown, right? That would be. But Nico Collins and Tank Dell aren't going anywhere. They're building no. block pieces with Stroud. So, like, I just don't know. Plus, you have Schultz, who's kind of on the younger side, too. So, like, a ton of young receiving weapons there. And I just, yes, I think there's value if you believe in his talent. I just don't know, like... The guy tore his ACL at, in his last year at Alabama, right? Plus the cancer. Like, we haven't really seen him on the field a ton. So, I, I don't know. I guess my question is, I don't really know just because of who's in front of him, too. Yeah. I think, like, but at least probably... in this... I think at Go least ahead. in this in this offense, like, I think he has the potential to be, like, a Tyler Boyd, like how we see in Cincinnati. Like, I think, like that's at best what we can hope for within like the next few years. It's possible as the team moves around and stuff, he becomes, I don't know the guy, like obviously we saw what he did in college. Like he had, he has the potential to be really good, but also we saw what Jerry Judy did in college and we saw what he's doing now. It's like, I'm not saying he's going to be a complete bust, but like, also it's like, are you happy if you have Jerry Judy on your team? No, you know? 
And I mean, if you're in a redraft, I mean, Mechie's not even on your roster. So Nico Collins is 24. Trent Noah yeah. Brown in is 27, I think 27. Yeah. And Mechie, so Mechie's probably what 23 or something like at yeah, 23. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, but they also have another rookie out of Iowa State who is really good in Xavier Hutchinson. Like, they are yeah. loaded at receiver. Um, they have, like, I doubt Robert Woods is there next year. I could, I, I, I don't want to say, like, 100%, but so maybe Mechie can fit in that wide receiver three role eventually. They used pretty good draft capital on him, so I yeah, think it's they interesting, Trent. If you believe in his talent, I, I like it. Yeah. And I don't think he should be unrostered in any dynasty leagues. Like if he's on your way, if no, he's on he your waiver be, wire, like rostered, that's a good guy yeah. to hold on to. Like, especially if you have leagues that have, you know, uh, taxi squads for up to two years long, but, uh, I don't know if we need to talk about anything else in this game, but I, I really like all the pieces on it. Like it's good. Yeah, Stroud, it has a Stroud Murray. I think it's good. It's a great fantasy game. One of the better ones we have this week on the main slate for sure. Mm-hmm. Phil, anything else, buddy? Nope, that's it. I um, I know Jordan was also excited to see Lat Murray get a touchdown and uh, uh, get some get some big runs there, huh, Jordan? I had a lot of him in DFS, so yes, I yes I was, Phil. All right, let's. Uh, I'm I'm taking I am taking Houston. I'm going Houston too. I got Houston. I hope they lose though, but I got Houston. You going Bird Gang? Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll, I'll go Cardinals. Go oh, Cardinals there. All righty, moving on here. We have the five and five Raiders coming off a hot two game win streak against the six and three Dolphins. I think if they win three and they beat the Dolphins, like this is this this has the potential of a Cinderella story here, Trent. Yeah. The current total right now is forty six and a half. Miami is favored by a whole bunch at twelve. No starts, no sits in this game. Is the uh is has the clock struck midnight, Trent? Is that is that what we're thinking here today? Like obviously fantasy, this this on the Miami side has an opportunity to be a fun game, but what do you think the clock has struck midnight on this Raiders team, Trent? Here's the deal. If the Raiders win this game, they honestly should get like a trophy or something because no one thinks they're going to win. And the best place to get a trophy is Trophy Smack, guys. So go to www.trophysmack.com forward slash dudes. Get 15% off your whole entire order, guys. They got participation awards. They got last place awards. They got champion awards. But yeah, this is something like this Raiders team's totally different right now. Uh, people have been saying I look like Aiden O'Connell with this mustache. I don't know why. But uh this Raiders team's totally different, but go over to Trophy Smack and make your league totally different, guys. Go get a nice little trophy, you know, last place award, first place award, whatever it is. It's not too late to make your fantasy football league better. But yeah, I don't know if this clock struck midnight, Phil. I'm more curious, like, is Devin A. Chain going to suit up? And if he does, are we plugging him in our lineups? But uh, Raiders, they're playing, they're playing tough. Like, they're, uh, I, I don't think they're going to win. I think the magic runs out, Phil, if that's what you're saying. You think Traveling the magic comes out? Yeah. What do you, what he do you was think? limited on practice on Wednesday. I have a feeling that he he suits up, but it's it's really it's kind of tough to know what he's going to look like. Jordan, what do you what are your thoughts there? No, I mean that's kind of what I have in my notes is that like it's a really good spot for the Miami run game. I just don't know who's going to be carrying the ball, you know. And if A Chain's active, then it just it's just one more guy. And I think McDaniel kind of said like, you have a weird presser about it. Like it was a yeah. weird comments, but. Basically, just said like if he's he, he's he's really he knows he wants to get out there and start playing. So, um, I can't imagine he gets a, a big workload, but it would be the first time that they have a bunch of guys active. So I, I think it'd be the first time that Wilson, A Chain, and Mostert would all be active, and and so there's just a lot there, and it's a great spot though. I just I don't know how to how to use the spot. I'd take advantage of that spot. Yeah, Dolphins, I think, are going to smash here. The Dolphins don't beat good football teams. Like, you look at who they've beaten. They don't beat, like, they, contenders, but they absolutely dummy bag bad teams. Yeah. And I think they're yeah, going to they, dummy they bag put it on them. They put it on them, too. Like, they don't let yeah. up. They just keep it, scoring. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very possible we have two Miami Dolphins running backs with 15-plus points in this game. Which yeah, two, it could though? be, like, it could be like that uh, Denver game. Yeah. No, it, but it which could be like, Trent? 
I think Mostert for sure. And uh, if A Chain plays, I think he scores. Like he's just. Too but like it could it there. could be Jeff Wilson or Ahmed. Like they're gonna yeah. use all four running backs probably. Yeah, it's a mess. But uh, firing and Waddle, I believe, is playing. Tyreek Hill, good. This is a great such uh, to a, a spot. It's such a good Tyreek spot. Like obviously, you're yeah. always playing Tyreek, but like he's gonna smash this week. And Waddle was full practice participant on Wednesday, just okay. for what it's worth, Trent. No, that's good. Uh, Devontae Adams, you're firing him up. It's a is it a decent Josh Jacob spot? How are the Dolphins against the it's run? Okay, I, it's it's you know it's an okay, it's like a, a solid spot. I would say you just have to hope that the Raiders can keep it close enough to keep Jacobs active, and they don't just you know fall down twenty one to zero or something because but they're gonna they get Jacob's might just ball. they might just run the ball every every play just so they don't you know to slow yeah. the see uh Dolphins down. Yeah, the Miami's like uh, mid pack. They lost 16 fancy points per game. So running backs, yeah, about mid pack. What about uh Jacoby Myers? Are we excited for him in something like this? I'm he not was playing quiet I'm, last week. Yeah, I, I don't know Duh. if you can play Myers. I the only other Raider I kind of like, and it's where like because it's tied in is Mayor. I think yeah. Mayor is just a tad interesting, just because it's tied in, you know. So. Yeah, Mayer had, uh, I think he had five targets last week, had three receptions, and he had a really nice TD catch in that game. Showed so, showed off that athleticism, you know, that he had at Notre Dame, Phil's favorite school. Uh, but yeah, yeah, five targets, three catches. Uh, I'm going to say Dolphins win this game. I don't know if we need to touch on it anymore. Uh, no. Seth, anything, you know, I feel like you're kind of our Jacoby Myers guy of the pod, Seth. Is that true or is that false? I mean, I guess... But um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to trust any Raiders right now, just in this game at least. I mean, maybe if the game's like out of hand, like obviously they're gonna be throwing the ball a lot, and they might just be be playing cover Siberia the whole second half, and you know, and the Devonte Adams and Myers have good games receiving because they just get thrown the ball every play. I mean, that's maybe their only chance. I think, but I'm gonna take Miami here. So if Seth has trouble trusting the Raiders, and is that because of Raiders fans or just because of the football team? I, I'm confused. Hmm. Probably both. Okay, that's fair. Uh, okay, that's I'm going to say anyone going Raiders this week? No. No. I, I'll i take the spread if you guys are willing to. No. If, all right, never mind. This then. is a sick joke I'm tired of hearing. <laughs> Close your ears. <laughs> uh, Close all your right. Ears and mute your mic. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> all People right. We have the three and seven Bears versus the seven two Lions. Current total right now is 47. Detroit is favored by 10. Um, this is a an awesome spot. I would imagine you're going to say here, Jordan, for a lot of the Lions offense. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts here? Basically, you're just dialing up your lines. That's about it, huh? Yeah, I like the lines here. Laporta, um, obviously, ASB always. Uh, he's been really good. I don't know if you guys looked at like just his production the last like five weeks. Yeah, he's been amazing and super consistent, super mm -hmm. super consistent. Um, and then I so Gibbs outsnap Montgomery fifty eight percent to thirty eight percent last week. I would imagine it probably stays about 60 40 is what i think but i still think D but gibbs did get the one yard uh one yard touchdown last week which was interesting but it was also after a long run by him so i don't know if that's why they kept him in but or maybe he's taking that role from montgomery which would really hurt montgomery's value quite a bit if he's not mm -hmm. going to be the guy who gets all those goal line um carries um and then on the I chicago think... side go ahead trent no i i was just saying i think that uh Montgomery maybe is kind of getting, you know, his lungs back too. He did break off that really long run that saved oh, you from yeah. Montgomery. Uh, I think uh, Campbell likes both of them, but uh, Gibbs definitely seems like he kind of pulled away finally. Like he's finally getting it. But uh, sorry I agree. about that. No, on the Chicago side, Fields playing helps all of them, I think. Like it's not the best matchup in the world, but if the Lions do what I think they can do in this game, the Bears will be chasing from behind. So like Komet, Moore, I think are are fine. Um, and then Fields is fine too. Like you probably have him on your 
you've been holding on to him. Um, you got to play him. So I agree. I'm going to say Lions win this game. One pride, Seth. What? What do you? You got anything else you want to say? Or I'm definitely going for the Lions here. So this is kind of a Lions pod. It is a That's Lions true. pod, and you know we know the fantasy dad's really not repping the the Patriots. He's he's got his he's got his Lions hat on. Also, listener Steve repping the Lions. So uh, Lions all day. Moving on here, uh, we have probably America's game of the week. We have the Seahawks versus the Rams six and three Seahawks versus the three and six Rams current total right now is 46 Seattle. Seattle is favored by half a point. Um, and uh, Trent, you have a sit in this game. Yes, I have a sit and uh, I'm ready for you to sit saying that the Seahawks are America's game of the week every single week because America's baby. team, baby. It's just <laughs> you. Just, you just you go to it a lot. I have Cooper Cup, and that's just uh, the. It's ugly. Do we know if Stafford's playing? Have, have we heard anything? I, I know th- they didn't I put him on so. IR. Okay, I think that hurts playing. a little bit. But the Seahawks actually haven't allowed a receiver to top eighty nine yards since we haven't had a receiver top eighty nine yards since week three, and they've played New York Giants, Cincinnati, Arizona, Cleveland, Baltimore, Washington, so far. So. uh yeah, I don't like. I I'm going. I'm going. Uh, Cooper Cup is my sit. I don't like it he, with Stafford back, really. But I, this is just kind of a bold one here. Is my sit, and clearly you can't sit if he's on your team. But I think because of the draft I think capital. the only way this one really does really well if Puka just has a a good game, right? And that's kind of how the offense moves the ball. Without if they run well and they can throw the ball to Puka, I think that's how they're going to get beat. And I actually think. Oh, man. I actually think I might like Puka more than Cooper Cup in this game. But also, Cooper Cup has also just completely destroyed the Seahawks in years past. So, yep. who knows? Yeah, this is definitely one that could just absolutely blow up in my face. And it's like he's wide receiver one on the week. But uh, I just yeah. – I, I think Seahawks have actually played pretty decent against the pass this season. They have gotten they, better. They've so. gotten a little bit better. And they got the – the one thing that I'll say is like – I have a feel Seth, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like this is not a DK game. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think it DK he always he usually struggles against the Rams for one reason or another. I don't know what it is, but I just don't think it's gonna be a DK game at all. In any rivalry game, DK always has something come out that's yep. like not does not help. I There's almost doesn't like I almost made DK my sit of the week. He is only he scored a touchdown against the Rams in week one, but since then he has only one other touchdown. So it's just yeah. kind of, maybe he gets back in the end zone this week, but you guys are saying he kind of struggles against the Rams. I don't pay close enough attention to DK. I did think it was cool that he gave his jersey to Logan Thomas after the last game. That was kind that was of a cool. feel good story. You know, Logan Thomas said, my son's a big fan of yours. Would you mind giving me a jersey or something? And he gave him a jersey. So kind of a cool thing. You want to check that out on socials. But while you're at socials, remember give us a follow at TFF Dudes on Twitter and Instagram. Remember, don't be rude. Share the dudes, guys. Jordan, you got any notes on this game? Well, my note was Bounce back for Cooper Cup, question mark. You kind of answered that <laughs> with your sit. My only problem with your answer, Trent, is have a little more conviction and just say you don't play Cooper Cup. Don't give the like the old, well, you probably can't. He's my sit, but you probably can't sit him because of the draft capital. No, like have some conviction and say don't play Cooper Cup no matter what. Fine. Do not play Cooper Cup no matter what, even if there's a fire. Jordan just gave you some life advice. Jordan just gave well, you like, Jordan. I, when you, you draft just in the him. first round, it's hard. I like I understand someone being like, I'm playing Cooper Cup. He's been hurt. He's back. Matthew Stafford's back. I'm gonna play him. But I still don't think it's that good of a matchup. Then say like don't give the Kavit like, well, you probably can't sit him because you're draft capital, but he's my sit of the week. No, just be like, he's my sit of the week. Don't play him. Yeah. Should I edit give him some other dad advice, Jordan. Give him some other dad advice, like open or open car doors, hold the door open at the restaurant. Like if there's if the place if the place is full and there's a lady standing, give your seat up. Like anything else you want to, you know, give have this guy conviction in your have conviction in your beliefs, and, and don't waver on them. 
Is this a moment of silence or is this an awkward silence? I, no, Trent, I guess you could just Trent, I guess you could just backpedal when you're wrong. You know, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what he does. He sets himself up for that because he gives the, the excuse like, you know, like you probably will start him because you have to because you're no like if you drafted a sucky player, you draft a sucky player and don't start him. This sounds like a bitter uh, guy who drafted Cooper Cup. I'm probably going to play him because the, no, I have <laughs> Christian Watson. I, what? Who else I is my know. option? Like, I think everyone else but, who drafted Cooper Cup's in your same boat. That's the problem. No, but I didn't say that he's not my sit. He's your sit. So okay. you should say you shouldn't start him. Best thing I ever did in my – well, this will probably backfire on me now is I traded Cooper Cup you know, a couple weeks ago in the Dynasty League, and I have felt great since doing that. And I didn't even get that much, but I did get a first-round draft pick for it. So, But I do have Puka in that league also. I'm going to say Seahawks win this game, and uh, you guys got to remind me to update the background there, guys. It's, it was the wrong game. So uh, I'm going Hawks. Jordan, you going to go Rams? Rams house? Um, no. Okay, Hawks, Hawks Nation, across. baby. Let's go. Usually, you don't even, you don't even like have that. to ask. Uh, it is in LA. Right. It is in LA, which I guarantee there's going to be. Uh, yeah. All right, moving on here. We have the four and five Chargers versus the three and six Packers. Current total right now is 44. LA Chargers are currently favored by three. No starts or sits in this game. I think we can get through this one pretty quick, guys. Let's let's just jump into like some uh some good good stuff here and move on is this the game we can finally play quentin johnson like what has to happen for him to get more involved is if keenan allen doesn't play then yeah but if keenan yeah. allen's playing i don't know if you can play quentin johnson this, yeah a lot of weird stuff in chargers camp jordan you did talk about you know uh Bill Belichick going to the Raiders. There's leaked rumors coming out that it looks like it's probably the Chargers where he's going. I don't know if you've seen that. That that, that would of, also make sense too. Yeah. Yeah. So but, Chargers uh, is another spot. Um, he I doesn't know. seem like a Chargers guy though. Like I don't know. Like Raiders would just make so much more sense for Belichick. It just the fit seems cleaner. But um, yeah. I don't know. Is this a good? Uh, I, no, I'm just gonna say it's like an awesome Eckler spot. Like that's that's the thing that most stands out the most to me. Like really good Eckler spot. Yeah, we're having you know a little different pod next week for Thanksgiving week. It's gonna come out on Wednesday, and I don't know. Like there's we're gonna talk about kind of like fantasy football things, things we're thankful for. I don't know if anyone who drafted Austin Eckler is thankful they drafted Austin Eckler, if you know what I'm saying. And maybe this is the spot, just maybe, that Austin Eckler makes you, you know, go into the Thanksgiving holiday thankful he's on your roster. Um, but yeah, if it's not here, then where, Jordan? Um, anyone on the Packers side we're excited to play? Watson, I mean, like, this should be the game for him. If it's he not, had targets. I don't know. He had targets last week. They just didn't connect. I think he had seven yeah. targets. Because yeah, his I quarterback's mean, not good at football. Yeah. 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 He had, it's yeah, only it's, his rookie year, though, Jordan. So It's true. He's fly. a rookie, Jordan. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, uh, he's a bad rookie, but he's a rookie. Yeah. Second year rookie. Jordan Love has a 60.7 completion percentage. Uh, yeah, it's just not. Not good. And big shoes to fill, too. Uh, I, I don't know. I almost like the other Packers receivers more than Watson. It seems like Dubs and the uh, rookie over there had a pretty solid game last week. I'm going to say Chargers win this one. Got a buddy Chargers. going to this game, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, bolts, bolt up. Phil, what are you doing? I am going – I am going uh, – I'm going Chargers. Seth, Getting back to 500. What are you doing, Seth? I'm going to go. Seth's computer's malfunctioning, unfortunately. I think probably ingested all that smoke from his uh, cigar. You're good, Seth. I'm going, uh, I'm going Chargers. I don't think this Green Bay team's good. Okay. All right. What we got next, Phil? All right, we actually we have a game here, folks. I think a couple of weeks ago, everyone was saying this could be an absolutely terrible game. Uh, Kirk Cousins out, 
and uh, Jordan just took a deep breath and, and exhaled. So I'm, I'm worried that he's going to disagree. Uh, and Justin Jefferson was out. But this game is shaping up to be a lot better uh, than I think people originally expected. This is the Sunday night game, folks. Vikings 6-4. and four. Josh Dobbs, we're going to talk about it a little bit, Jordan. Broncos 4-5, and five, coming off two games here winning. And the current total right now is 43 Denver at home favored by two and a half. Jordan, you have a sit in this game, but is there anything that you want to just kind of drop, you know, drop some knowledge here, Trent, on Josh Dobbs, Russell Wilson? Wilson's looking like 2013 Wilson. Like, what's up here, guys? I'll, I'll go to Jordan first. No, he has a the sit exhale. The, the exhale was because I you said it's such a great game, and I looked, and it was Minnesota Denver. And then I was waiting for the Russell Wilson name drop, and it took you about a minute. I was surprised at how long it took for you to get to Russell Wilson. But um, you have a start in this uh, game. Yeah, I do have a start. Um, <laughs> Alexander. Uh, so my start's Ty Chandler. Uh, Madison like concussion it. protocol. I don't think he plays. Obviously, if he plays, this is like he's not really. But like this is a start, assuming Alexander Madison um, doesn't play, which. These guys have not been coming back within the week from the concussion. So um, Chandler played 44% snaps last week and had 15 carries after Madison went out. Um, I think he had 15 carries for 45 yards and a touchdown. I saw the stat that Madison has like over 100 rush attempts with zero touchdowns. And Ty Chandler has like 20 when one touchdown. So um, I think all 15 of those were like last week. So a good chunk of them were in the one game. Uh, Denver gives up 27 fantasy points per game to running back. That is the most. They give up the most rushing yards, and they've given up 13 rushing and receiving touchdowns to running backs. So this is a really good matchup for Chandler in an increased role. Denver uh, just got gashed by the aforementioned Lat Murray on this pod and uh, James Cook. So um, it's just a really good spot for Chandler. I liked him. I think he was at... Um, he was in Tennessee for a little bit. I think he might have been in North Carolina before Tennessee. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know he was at Tennessee in college. He was pretty good in college. I think the Vikings used like a, a mid-round draft pick on him, uh, I think, last year or maybe it was this year. I don't know. Is he a rookie or not a rookie, Trent? He's not. He's not a rookie. Not. Yeah, I think they used like a third, fourth, fourth round draft pick on him in uh, the 20, maybe 22 draft. But um, yeah, I like Chandler a lot a lot this week. I think it's a great spot for him. You know, no one really wants to talk about it, but I, I agree with you, Jordan, but no one wants to really talk about it. The weird thing is, is the Broncos, you know, they just beat the bills, which I know the bills had 12 men on the field. So that's kind of silly for the win. And they, but they beat the chiefs, you know, before their bye week, the Broncos are kind of stringing things together. Russ isn't playing terrible. Uh, he hasn't thrown for over 200 yards since week three, I believe, but he did have 17 fantasy points against the Bills. So he's not like an absolute terrible play, but uh, then it's on the other side, running. yeah, the other side, yeah, and that, that probably helps too. The other side is, uh, you know, our boy Dobbs is over there. So, uh, yeah, Jordan, yeah. I think that's the only way you get hurt, I think, is if Dobbs runs in the touchdown. Like he has, I'm looking at his yeah. stats right now. He's had four games in a row of rushing touchdown. And yeah. Like yeah. At least it's six or seven good... attempts. Like, I know, I think you're it, right with the Chandler thing, yeah. but I think the only way you get messed up is if I, Josh Dobbs runs it in when Chandler probably should be getting the ball, like, which I think is actually like a decent, well, like, chance of happening. I think, I think Chandler could break off a long one. Like, Cook was close to breaking off runs. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure literally was. the one where he, he basically passed the ball to himself on the ground. You know, he fumbled and got the ball and kept running. Like, I think Chandler could break off like a 30-yard touchdown run in this game. But mm -hmm. I think then on the other side, Javante's in a really good spot as well, and he looks good. Like, he's starting to look like the old Javante that we were so excited about. So, um, yeah, I, I like the running backs in this game quite a bit. The other weird stat, did I talk about Justin Jefferson or no? No, no. Yeah, Vikings, I mean, yeah. Vikings record with Justin Jefferson this season is one and four. Vikings record without Justin Jefferson is five and zero. Oh. So I think that's noisy, but I mean, it's I, I noisy. Don't know if there's much. 
Yeah. It's it's noisy, but it's still fun to, you know, just think about a little bit. And Jefferson probably not playing this week, it looks like. I think you're going to have to wait one more week. I thought maybe he yeah. was going to, but... O- O'Donnell said something well, weird today about him. So, like he's so, getting better but not ready or something. Do you think there's a, a chance they hold him out to lap for the bye? They play Denver, Chicago, and then bye week, and then come back with Raiders. They come back Foster with Raiders, their... B- Bengals, Lions, Packers, Lions. So, like, I could see them holding them out, holding them out until after the bye week. Do you think he'd be practicing in limited fashion, though, to wait three more weeks or four more weeks? Maybe. Maybe he's just because he's li- I, w- I mean, I guess. I mean, it, it did see saying unlikely to play, like, so. Like, what does limited mean? Limited could mean he's doing stretching and running some routes with no contact. That's a limited practice. You know, like, Mm -hmm. there's various degrees of limited. I would agree with you, Jordan. Like, saying that he's doing a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow. Like, that doesn't mean that by he's doing a lot of it by Sunday evening. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just, I I doubt it. Like, he's probably, you know, in the cold plunges and... Yeah, they're not, not going to rush him back at all. He was doing cold plunges before he was come back. Like, <laughs> let's not act like cold plunges is a practice routine, please. Cold plunges and essential oils, baby. That'll get anyone back into the game. Uh, do we want to? Do we want to drop who we're taking here? I think you can play Dobbs still. He's only sixty six percent rostered on sleeper, which is still pretty. Man, low I think for a, guy a great who's spot for Dobbs, man. Yeah. Um. Hopefully Addison can get going, and uh, Hawkinson gonna keep getting oh, after baby, it. That guy's getting go. targeted like crazy with Dobbs. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say, man, does the my, does the Viking magic end here? Is this no. the spot where we don't see it? You no. think it keeps going? No. Skull. We've uh, all picked against the Broncos. All of Skull. us guys. The last two. Oh weeks. no, I'm going Broncos. Skull. I'm going Broncos. Broncos country. Let's ride, Phil. Skull. Let's ride. Uh, I think I'm going to go, man, I, I'm going to go Vikings. Broncos shouldn't have won that last game, but, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Vikings, but I'm cheering for you, Phil. Thank you for your cheering. And, uh, yeah, for. I mean, yes, exactly. That's the problem. <clears throat> and I feel like the Broncos have beat in back to back weeks they've beat decent teams and yet you're still you're still Chiefs questioning them yeah they shouldn't have beat the bills they keep it close though they keep it close they keep it close um all right we have the four and five buccaneers and the six and three uh 49ers current total right now is 41 and a half De- uh, san francisco is currently favored by 11 and a half I'm sure that point total just sends shivers down your spine, Jordan, seeing as what happened to the Jags. Uh, no starts or sits in this game, um, but let's uh, let's get into it here. This is actually a really hard game for the Bills, I feel like. They they need to win. They're out of playoffs at the moment, the I Bucks. believe. Bucks. Sorry. I'm sorry. I went the wrong number there. Uh yeah, just ignore that. Then what I just said, Bucks but it is lying. a real, it is a really tough game for the Bucks. And here's, and they have two. It's going to be, a, it might be a rough game for really anyone on the Bucks offense. Just like with the play that we saw on the defensive line for the Niners, like I don't know how much time Baker is going to have. Well, that and uh, Bucks are allowing the highest passing yards per game right now. So this could be. I don't know if you need Brock Purdy. If they'll need Brock Purdy, I think it's a Bucks are a little bit better against the run, but I think CMC gets back in the end zone. Uh, maybe a game that Debo gets going again here still too, but Bucks are vulnerable through the air, so probably a good Purdy spot too. I don't know what Purdy's roster ship is right now, but uh, what do you have, Jordan? No, I just like the, the San Francisco passing game. I like Purdy a lot. I think Ayuk Samuel. Um, that's just, it's just a, such a good matchup for the Pattinson game here. So I like Purdy. I like the receivers. I like CMC. I like all the Niners here. And then I think, uh, Evans is probably your best, your best bet. And then Rashad white too, just cause of volume, but those two guys on the Bucks side. 
Yeah, yeah, I would lean Rashad White over him just because if Baker Mayfield's having no time, like it's possible Rashad White has like six catches for like 30 yards. You know, like he just gets a tons of points and catches just because he's having no time to throw the ball. And so he's dumping it down to Rashad White, which he already does. But it is possible this, the 49ers defense just completely stalls this team and nobody has a good game. Like that is a very real possibility. This game could be ugly really quick. Yeah. The 49ers have given up 100 plus receiving yards in four straight games. So I think that's since the Dallas game. Uh, but yeah, the pass rush is going to be the problem. I'm going to say, you know, start your Niners. I, the only guy I can't see doing good is it seems like Kittle doesn't do good in like blowout games. He's more of like the, the green. Last games week he good. did. Last week he was good, Trent. Was, he? was that, was that, I think before, I said the same though, thing last was, week too. Was that before it was like out First of First half or second half. Know. Yeah. I mean, he had a 66 yard bomb. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's on fire right now, but and you're never going to sit Kittle. But no, I he's always the guy that I feel like I say that with every week. Um, I'm going San Fran here. I'm going San Francisco. San Niners. Francisco. Niner gang, bang bang, as Phil always says. All right, moving up here to the game that Trent was referring to initially. We have the four and five Jets versus the five and five Bills. Current total right now is 40. Buffalo is currently favored by seven. Aaron Rodgers was on Pat McAfee saying that he feels like he will be back after the Thanksgiving holiday or around the holidays, I think was the, the, the he actual said mid-December, quote. which is crazy. That's a month yeah. from now. I, I yeah, think and you guys were all calling me crazy. You guys were calling me crazy. I said he was going to be back. I called it. I called I think it. The I only said he chance this back. guy comes back is if the Jets have like a legitimate chance at like playoffs. Like if they don't have, if they have a small chance, he's obviously not coming back. I don't think so. Yeah. I have had no, knee problems he, he will, for the last said. six years. Why? And go he, ahead. He will, Seth, because he wants to prove that he can do it. He wants he to might, prove but like his, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think he might value his career maybe above coming no. back to a four and 10 team, you know, like I think he's already proved that point wrong though. Yeah. You might that be what? right. That he, that preserving, preserving his career. Like he's already walking like, with the Achilles injury, you know, like it's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm still skeptical that he actually is able to come back in mid December, but it's. I nuts. think that he 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 wants to do it. I think the fast thing I've ever heard is that a. Uh, I think there was a soccer player. I oh man, who was it? He came back to play anyway. the World Cup. No, he came back to play in the World Cup six months out, or maybe it was the Euro, the Euro Championship. It was a big international tournament. Came back six months after tearing his Achilles, and that was like crazy fast, which is crazy fast. Six months to go from tearing your Achilles to playing in like a major soccer game. So, like the four months that Aaron Rodgers is trying to do, or the three months, is absolutely insane. And it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make it sense. doesn't make sense. But if it if it works and he does not get hurt, like that's like a med- that's like a medical like breakthrough. Miracle. No, I don't even know if it's a miracle. It's like a medical breakthrough. Like <laughs> that means like if people want to rehab, like whatever he's doing, like follow that protocol. Like that could be, it's an actually insane. Yeah. Dark rooms hey. in ayahuasca. <laughs> okay. Uh, fantasy wise. Pretty sure Phil did that after he twisted his ankle. <laughs> but <laughs> I did not. I did not do either of those things. I do not recommend doing any of those things. <laughs> I do recommend cold plunges, though. He does like dark rooms, though, for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Zach Wilson has thrown one touchdown pass since the bye week. Uh, and that was a decent spot versus the Raiders to throw a TD pass. I think Buffalo comes out really mad here, plays physical. I know their defense is a little beat up. You can play Brees Hall. Garrett Wilson's still playing really well. Um. I think the Bills, I think Bills, Josh Allen has a good game. Ken Dorsey got fired, basically. Does Ken Dorsey get fired if the Bills don't put 12 men on the field? Probably. I think so. They were so bad. Their offense offense is so bad. If they win, you still think they fire them? But, uh, 
weird team. Then you have the, you know, Stefan Diggs, his brother, tweeting about him. Yeah, that's needing so to weak. leave. I that's think so I think there's more drama to this whole story than they're acting like there is. I think Stefan Diggs is upset. He's not yeah. getting the ball more. So with that said, I think this is a smash. Step. Well, Jets are really good on defense. You know who? No, I, I it's not a smash. Diggs it's not a smash. Jets no, defense. no, Jets. No, D's good. Really is good, good, man. He's good. Yeah. So I don't know. Bills Austin's lost the really Jets good. once already this year. Uh, I got hey, I got Jets winning this game. You think Jets win? You think the dumpster fire Jets continues? Win. I think it's, I think Buffalo's a mess right now. I think it's an absolute mess over there. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna agree with Jordan here. I'm gonna go New York. I'm gonna go Buffalo. I'm going Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll see. Yeah. Josh Allen did not have a good game. They just have to cut back on the turnovers. But sometimes after a firing, Wait. guys kind of pull it together, right? Yeah, but Trent, we've been talking about you. We've said the same thing year after year. Josh Allen needs to cut down the turnovers. He needs to cut down. The, he doesn't cut down the turnovers. It's, it's not like, and they've been winning in spite of that, like the last couple of years. But I don't know this team. I don't know. It's it just feels off to me with this team. Do you think Josh? Yeah, and the defense is really beat up. They have some key starters missing, but yeah. I don't know if the Jets have the offense to really get it done. Is the thing. Yeah, like, but if their defense has a pick six or, you know, like yeah. if their defense is creating, getting pressure and creating short fields for this offense, like this is a tough matchup. This is one of the tough. This Jets defense is like a top five defense, like in the league. And it's why if Aaron Rodgers hadn't got hurt, this Jets team would probably be really, really good. Yeah. You know, they don't need much on offense to win games. Like, they're not that far off from the Browns defense. The Browns defense essentially is winning them games, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping, yeah, I, I don't know. I have a lot of Bills players. I'm hoping they bounce back. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going Bills. And maybe that's just me being hopeful. No, I'm I'm with you there, Trent. I'm, I'm going Bills as well. All right, moving on here. Are you going to say something else? No. Okay. All right. Moving on here. We have the six and three Cowboys against the one and eight Panthers. Current total right now is 42. Dallas is currently favored by 10 and a half. Jordan, you have a sit. Yeah, I got Adam Thielen as a sit here. Um, Dallas gives it the third least fantasy points per game to wide receiver. The second least receiving yards to wide receivers. It's less than a thousand. Uh, Thielen's production has j- dipped down dramatically over the last two weeks. He is uh, 5 for 29 and 6 for 42 the last two weeks. Um, this is a brutal matchup. Like, there's no other way to put it. A brutal matchup. The Cowboys have really responded the last three to four weeks with their defense. Um, and I don't trust Young in this matchup to get the in the ball. Maybe he gets you, like, the seven, carry, the seven catches for 60 yards. I just don't see the upside in this spot. I don't see the big play ability. You're basically – you need to the, the rack up the PPR points, the catches – so I, I don't like dealing at all in this spot. Yeah, it's it's a really bad spot. And Cowboys side, fire up your guys. Fire up Ferguson, fire up Lamb. I don't think I'm willing to play Brandon Cooks again, even though he just went, you know, absolutely bananas last week. Uh, what do you think about Paul or Jordan? You want to sit him? He is We're right way back, back to like, we talked about how they couldn't like get a better spot and then he and gets back a better at. spot the following week. Like <laughs> Carolina is literally like one of the best spots for running back. It's like, it's like, um, it's like Denver and Carolina. Those are the two best spots for running backs. So like, I don't know, man, Pollard, I, I got suckered into the Pollard thing last week. I'm probably gonna get suckered in again because like, do they just go back to throwing the ball over the all over the yard again? Like I, I don't know, but this is such a good matchup for Pollard. Like I can't ignore it. Well, this stat here, which is not good, is Tony Pollard is the only running back with seven plus rushing attempts and zero touchdowns since week two. Which no, is I, I know, I but I mean Carolina is just it's just such a good spot for running back. So I'm uh, I'm in a deep league. I'm curious to start Rico Dottle in this and just, you know, maybe he gets if you think they the win by 30 again. 
I think it's worth it. But this is, I mean, Bryce Young's a little bit more capable than um, Tommy DeVito. So <laughs> Tommy DeVito was a missed opportunity. For, well, it's still coming up, but that just seems like that's the type of guy that like would join this pod with us. You know what I'm saying? Like he's one Probably, of Probably, yeah. Like, you when know? he's selling cars in the, in three years, he might join the pod with us. Seth kind of reminds me of a Tommy DeVito, you know, like Seth, aren't you Italian? I am Italian. Yep. And you have, if, Italian, Italian, if, if I'm being compared to like a NFL quarterback, I'll take that as a compliment, man. I'll take it. Trent, you know, I'm also Italian. Why do you, why do you go to Seth for being Italian? Yeah, Trent. What's your problem, <laughs> dude? Know. Do you want me? my my, my grandpa's name was literally DiGiorno. That was it, my grandpa's well, yeah. last name. I know the pizza company. Yeah, but you don't you know his you know like Seth does. <laughs> I don't know what what did you say? I don't know what he said. I didn't hear him. He said, said you, you don't, don't live, live with your, your parents like Seth does. No, that is it's not true. <laughs> it's so stupid. But hey, Jordan, yeah, you're Italian too, man. My bad. Uh yeah, yeah. Seth, I'm sorry, Mr. DiGiorno. At least Seth married an Italian, man. Seth, your kids have quite a bit of Italian in them. Yeah, my kids are actually more Italian than me, if that even makes sense. But yeah, it's it true. does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, a very actually, small Actually, if fraction, you think but... about it, it makes perfect sense. That's usually <laughs> how it happens if two people who are Italian marry each other. Yep. Yeah. And let's skip the health lesson and let's keep going on, <laughs> Phil. What do we got next? Oh. Everyone's going to Dallas. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> Trent, you are so dumb. What do Everyone we have is going next, down. Right? All right, moving on here. Uh, we have the Titans that are three and six. Jaguars just flipped that record around six and three. Current total right now is 40. Jacksonville is currently favored by six and a half. I'm gonna kick this over to my Italian Jags fan. Jordan, what are you thinking here? Um, it's pretty simple for me. I think it's a pretty good bounce back spot for the Jaguars. The fact that Vegas has them six and a half point favorites makes me feel a little bit better about the team in general. Um, yeah, I think I like ETN here. I like Kirk, uh, Hopkins on the other side. We'll see what Trevor Lawrence can do here. It's, it's a better throwing spot, but I just trust ETN a lot more. Um, and then the Ridley thing is Calvin Ridley. I don't really know what to do with Calvin Ridley anymore. So I, think just, I will say I think Calvin Ridley. Yeah, you just play him. Seth? Just play him. You just play him. Just play him, man. I hate saying that, you know but what? like, just do it. <laughs> you know what the best thing that Calvin Ridley is doing this year is? He draws a ton of pass interference calls. I know a that's ton the of them. I and, see and every so, time like, I see a pass interference, I just like want to like jump out of a window. I'm just like, dude, like, can we just like <laughs> catch the ball? He, he, like can so we like, can we why, just like, play can we play through pi and catch the ball like come on dude oh, like i yeah, get it like, you're trying to draw a foul but like just catch it, though i this just sounds crazy but like i feel like calvin lee is almost like a better real life football player than fantasy football player at this point in his career because i think he Probably does right. good things on the football field he just like i think he like he draws coverage wave draws coverage on the defense he draws a ton of pis like I think he's probably drawn probably seven or eight, nine PI calls this year. Like, and I know Doug Peterson has mentioned that, like how he's doing good things on the foot. Like he does a lot of good things on the football field. Just the production is not there. So, but Doug Peterson also mentioned, there's a lot of noise around. Like he mentioned they need to take more deep shots. Like they need to be more conscious and like, like intentional about throwing the ball deeper, which I don't know. That sounds like Calvin Ridley deep shots to me. So maybe we get a Calvin Ridley game. Trevor Lawrence is going to go off this week because I dropped him in a fantasy league that I'm doing terrible in because just out of spite, just like to break the curse. So Kyle Pitts, Thank Trevor you, Lawrence, Brent. buy those guys. They're going to go off now because they're not on my roster. So uh, yeah, fire up T-Law. Trevor Lawrence is behind Baker Mayfield in fantasy points right now for, you know, just to tell you how bad he is. Hmm. Baker's QB 16, Trevor Lawrence is QB 17. And a lot Man, of guys have Trevor bad. Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence got drafted. He was probably about the fifth QB off the board, but he really could bounce back and win you some championships because there's knuckleheads like me who don't want to deal with it anymore. And he might have got dropped. But uh actually, his roster ship's probably, you know, 80 plus percent, I would imagine. But I'm going Jags win this game. Anyone gonna go Jags. different? I'm, I'm going Jags too. 
All right, King of the Jungle. What do we got next, Phil? All right, we have the two and eight Giants versus the four and six Commanders. Current total right now is 37. Washington is favored by 10. And uh, Seth's cousin over there at QB for the Giants, which is kind of cool. Uh, Tommy V. Um, Saquon Barkley, maybe if he's going to have a good game, maybe this is the game. I love uh, Sam Howell this week. You know, NFL passing yards leader right now. He was last week. Is he still? I, I need to see an update on that. I believe uh, he still is leading the NFL in passing yards. Um, bounce back it's him and Dotson. Stroud, right? Yeah, it goes mm-hmm. him, then Stroud. Uh, yeah, I like Terry McLaurin bounce back game here, and uh, hopefully Jahan Dotson gets it going too. Um, anyone on the Giants side you want to play besides Barkley? Nah, just Saquon. Okay. Yeah, I don't even I don't even like Saquon either here. Like, it's just like the the, the Commanders are going to make him throw the ball, and so I don't even you know you I might like just Barkley. get all the you might get like eight. Eight dump downs, though. You know, you get the eight receptions. You hope you get some eight dump downs and Barkley makes some plays. Like, that's what you're hoping for. Yeah, it's possible, though. It's definitely. Oh, for sure. 100%. Yeah. This sounds gross, but uh, can you stream the Giants defense in this or the Commanders defense in this game? Like, why is that gross? I don't know. The Commanders just aren't that good of a defense. You you know, they've kind of took all their. Yeah. You don't have the pass rush. I know Tommy Vio is not good. Like, I don't. I think you can. I think commanders yeah. are fine. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it. Okay, Trent. They're a ten point favorite. Like, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. They probably there's nothing yeah. wrong with playing a, a t- evens as a ten point favorite. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna say commanders win this one. Anyone gonna go Giants? Seth, you go against your cousin Tommy. I'm going commanders, man. Commanders. Tommy Commanders. might have an offer you can't refuse. All right. What do we got wow. next here? Can we the Godfather? <laughs> have you He's seen not that gonna film? stop? How long it. how long will it take before this guy stops? I, I want Daniel Jones you back. You can't refuse. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm following. All right. We have the uh we have two six and three teams here. Uh we have the six and three Steelers versus the six and three Browns. The current total right now is 36 and a half. Uh, Cleveland is currently favored by five. I think Trent said this a little bit earlier. This might be the two most boringest teams ever, but uh, I think this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, it's it's just going to be. I think it's going to be a uh, Trent. Did you say knife fight? Like it's just going to be ugly. Like I just, it's just going to be a a def- Like there might be. What is the total on this one? It How are the Steelers six and three? And a half? Six that's 36 and a half. You could probably cut the point total in half, and I would still not be shocked if it was that low. Like it could be a it could be a Chiefs Denver game, the six to nine game that the uh Broncos won. Like I could easily seeing that happen. Uh Seth, to answer your question, how are the Steelers six and three? I don't know. It's definitely not Kenny What's Pickett. Their schedule, it's gotta be garbage, right? Well, here's the thing: don't the Steelers have like less offensive stats than like anyone they've played this year is that right i saw something like that on social media jordan you know what i'm talking about yeah it's something like that their 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 defense must so, be putting him in good field position I'm, it's my guess so they beat the browns week two that's the game where chubb got hurt and their defense pretty much won the, the, that game they beat the raiders they beat the Ravens 17 10 they beat the rams and they beat the Titans, and they beat the Packers. So, really, their only good wins are is the Ravens, is the Ravens. Yeah. That's their only will, good win. The only good win. I will say this is the reason why. If they don't have a forced fumble, they have an interception. If they don't have an interception, they have a forced fumble. This they create turnovers. Like they give up. Yeah, that, actually a lot of yards, but they give up. They may they get turnovers. No, yeah, for sure. That's what I was gonna say. Like it's because their defense puts their offense in decent positions. Um, but this is gonna be an absolute rock fight. Like I think, uh, like it's just gonna be brutal, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like I think Catch you can play draw this game. Yeah, I well, it might. It's it's just one of those divisional games. Like I like Jerome Ford. I think they lean on Jerome Ford with with uh, DTR starting. So. 
Because and his Pittsburgh defense will give up yards. So is it DTR? Is um, it is it PJ Walker? Yeah, they, no, well, they DTR it. starting. Okay. Um, yeah, he's starting. So and then I think like Cooper's tough with DTR. They're just not going to throw. I think they're going to run the ball a ton. Maybe some option stuff with DTR. He can run the ball. So I think on the Steelers side, like Jalen Warren's fine, but this Cleveland defense is literally the best defense in the league. So. I think it's Cleveland, Dallas, Baltimore, Jets are all probably top my top four top four defenses in the league. So like as yeah. far as like real life defense, but it's just a brutal matchup. And this Cleveland defense, man, they're gonna they're gonna do their best to get DTR like the best field position he can. And they know if they want to go to playoffs, it's, it's how they win. Their defense is gonna have to win them football games and keep it close. Yeah, both of these teams are giving Trent Dilfer a run for his money for that team that made a playoff run in 01 Harris has had a touchdown three of his past four games maybe this is a Jalen Warren spot Jordan it's a lot better Warren spot just because yeah. like if they get down they're gonna have to throw the ball and I just don't see them letting them get beat on the ground and Jalen Warren can have those dump downs and the pass catching and so I, I I think it's a Warren if you're gonna play anybody on the Steelers Warren's the only guy Probably in play for me. I know Frymuth coming back, but I just I can't do it. Is this the game that uh, Pickens finally has another you know eighty yard touchdown or something like that? Guy's been so frustrating this year. Did he do it the last time against the Browns? He did. I think I had him as a sit, and he did that, or one of us had him as a sit. And the thing is, is that might be the next guy I need to hate drop. You know, just for the sake of fantasy football players everywhere. <laughs> It's going to happen. You know, I got the all thuds team over here. Calvin Ridley, Trevor Lawrence, George Pickens, uh, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. So, uh, Jahan Dotson. I got Cleveland. I'm going Brownie. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to go Cleveland at home for Nick I'm, Chubb. Um, I'm going. That? Seth, go going? ahead. Uh, Browns. I'm also going Browns. Okay, last one of the slate here. This might be the best game of the week. I, I'm, I'm excited for this one, Phil. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. This is a great game. Um, we have the 8-1 and one Eagles versus the 7-2 and two Chiefs. Uh, basically a repeat of last year. Current total right now is 46. Kansas City is currently favored by three. Uh, Kel, uh, excuse me, Seth, you have a sit in this game. Um but yeah, Super Bowl rematch, Kelsey Bowl. I'm sure that you know, that Mama Kelsey will be repping both jerseys. Uh, Taylor Swift, Swift will be likely there. be in the Swift will be there. Uh, both Swifts will be there, DeAndre and Taylor. True. Uh, and uh, yeah, so overall, it's uh, it's just, Seth. Let's go into your sit. Yeah. So my sit is Isaiah Pacheco. Um, the Eagles recently have been really good at. They haven't allowed a, a running back to have over 100 uh, rushing yards. They have given up some receiving games, but Pacheco's not that receiving back. Like we see Jarek McKinnon is the receiving back there. Um, I don't think the Eagles give up a rushing touchdown right here unless like the unless there's like an unfortunate like tackle on like the one or two yard line on a play. I think that's the only way I get hurt here is if Pacheco has like I don't know, 40 rushing yards and touchdown. Like, and like, like I really don't think Pacheco is going to get more than 12 points. Like, I think he's going to get less than 10, but I don't think he's going to get more than 12. Like, I think you're only going to get hurt. Um, or, I mean, you'd be happy if he got 12, obviously, if you started him, but I don't think he's going to get there. Like, don't start Pacheco if you don't have to. So, all right. I don't know if I like the other side running backs either. Chiefs defense is really good. It's a tough matchup for both running for both running games. It's a lot better matchup. I mean, quite frankly, the Chiefs defense is good at everything. Like, it's a tough matchup for Hertz too. But like, and I know Hertz is banged up. There's been a lot of stuff coming out about that. Um, but like, it's a better passing game spot for the Eagles than it is running game. As good as Swift's been, they, I could see them getting Swift involved in the passing game, but. Um, I'm assuming Goddard's out, right? Goddard is out this week. Yes, yes, he's out. Yeah, so that gives he's a getting bump, surgery I think, on his forearm. So yeah, that gives a bump to Devonta Smith. 
Um, I don't know like what other tight ends. I think it's like a Jack Stoll, I think, is who's there. Like I don't yeah, know. If they're you can not really... gonna be relevant. Yeah. So like it's a bump, maybe like a Julio Jones. Like maybe Julio Jones bump, maybe. you know, in the red zone type of deal. So it's gonna bump somebody because they were using Goddard quite a bit. Um, Devonta Smith's got... numbers without Goddard are really good. Like it makes sense. Yeah, I traded Devonta Smith right before he got hurt for T. Higgins. So yeah, it's evident that, that Devonta sense. Smith goes off this game, and uh, um, I think it's a good spot. Like I mentioned in my sleeper section, like it's an elite spot for the KC passing game. You have to think they bounce back in this spot. Like this Eagles defense is getting, getting shredded by opposing teams. It's like there's not a better spot than this week. So, um, Rasheed Rice, Justin Watson would be my favorites of the wide receivers. But I think that a wide receiver gets it done this week or Travis Kelsey. Like, I mean, but it's just an elite spot for the KC passing game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is definitely getting it done this week. Yeah. With T Swift. The parents, the parents are all, the parents are, Mm -hmm. the parents are being met this week too. So there's that. Wait, what uh, what are you saying? It's It's meet the parents weekend. For who? The parents are meeting. They're both parent, both. T Swift's parents are going to be at the game and they're meeting Travis Kelsey's parents oh. for the first time. It's just going to be the most annoying Monday night game oh, of this stuff gosh, ever. <laughs> most it's be really fun to watch, but I cannot wait for like the first five minutes of the broadcast just seeing that like her face. I just can't already. I'm just why you can't wait for that? Why? No, I can't. Like, I just can't. Like, you ever heard that statement? Like, I just can't. No, I yeah, just don't be, want. I don't care about brutal. the story. Okay. Okay. Just shake it off, Seth. Dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. Travis Kelsey I'm going led Eagles Argentina last week. So I'm going. I think I'm going Chiefs. Taylor Smith. I got Chiefs. The Eagles are taking back the Super Bowl this week, baby. Yeah. Travis Kelsey thinks, you know, that might his future father-in-law might be in the house. I think they win. It's a good point. That is a great. That, uh, yeah. We need scores. Uh, Phil, give your. Oh no, I'll I'll give mine first. I'll go fifty-one. Trent, um, I won, so I go second. Right? Is that how it works? You you're in third. You have three. Yeah. So it goes okay, okay. leader to loser. And you said fifty-one. Yeah, I will go fifty-five. Dang it, Trent! Seth? I'm going. No, it's Phil, Seth. you're in it's last, Seth. buddy. Um, I'm oh, gonna go 49. Was, yeah, All right, Phil. 52. Did you say 52? No, I said 51. Okay, All right, I'm going 52. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. Hey, that does it. Remember, don't be rude. Share the dudes. Really helps us out. We will see you on Monday. Uh, it, thanks for tuning in as always. And as always, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for my little mess up on that one part, but uh, live and learn. And as always, take care. This has been another episode of the Fantasy Football Dudes podcast. Remember to rate, review, and follow. For more information, go to www.thefantasyfootballdudes.com. And remember, we are sorry for absolutely nothing.